call to order this meeting of the St. Augustine Port Waterway and Beach Commission, April 20th, 2021. Uh, all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary, please uh, perform roll call. Commissioner Rivers? Here. Commissioner Way? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Flowers? Here. Commissioner West? Absent. Absent. Uh, adoption and approval of the agenda. Any? Um, with, Ms. with Commissioner West out, I was wondering if we could hold off on new business till next month when she returns. I have no problem with that. Any, any objection? Would you state that again? I didn't understand. We were gonna hold, I was gonna asking to hold off on item 11, new business A, until we have a full board as Commissioner West is gone today. Yeah, so we'll skip new business uh, A today uh, until Commissioner West has a, is back. We have a full board present. Any any objections to that? No. Any other modifications? I have a motion to uh, adopt the agenda as amended. Aye. Oh, I second the motion. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, public comment. No takers. Great. Uh, government representative comments. You're on. Good afternoon, Jim Pigott, Director of General Services, City of St. Augustine. Um, just want to continue our discussion a little bit further with what we've been talking about the last three months regarding the pylons and salt run. We have come up with a draft, if you will, scope of work with a, with a, um, a chart on the back for evaluation that we would use. This is our proposal, so I'd like to give it to you all probably take you a little bit to look at it, digest it a little bit, and then maybe next meeting you can give us your feedback or whatever, but this is very similar to what we normally do uh, according to our purchasing policies. Um, and I think it's, we worded it a little bit so it fits with what you guys wanted to do with the replacement of the pylons. The one question on here that I have highlighted on my copy, didn't know if you wanted to go with wood pylons or concrete. So that's one answer we would probably need. So let me hand these out to y'all. also if we want to go this way you haven't voted yet I do have an interlocal agreement a draft agreement I sent to the attorney um, if you want to go that route I have copies that would need to be signed then I would need to get in our city commission uh, agenda so if you want don't know if you want to talk about that now if you do fine if not we can do that next meeting as well do you have extra copies of the interlocal to this is, yeah, I got three copies for three signatures. Okay. Um, is this about uh, replacing the pylons or? Yeah, if we're replacing the pylons so we get reimbursed. Um, this Have we done a vote on that yes, Ms. Mr. Meek? I know we discussed it, but I don't think we've actually voted whether to go ahead and. You had not. Okay, so and you're I still did giving it. us info. This is just okay. a draft of, okay. as they used to say in the military, leaning forward in the foxhole, getting ready just in case. Cool. And if you don't, this is very, very similar to the dredging of salt run in our local agreements, mm -hmm. change out salt run dredging to pylon repair installation. Great. So, and that's all I have. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Piggott, can you tell us what's gonna be happening with the um, Lincolnville kayak ramp, kayak launch? That is no longer a project. 
All right. Did uh, that I, go through the city commission, or that was just decided by the uh, city hall? Or? That was uh, decided by the commission during the budget process. Okay, during the budget process, I understand they gave you the ability to not do it then, but you promised to come back and, and look at it again later. We're just not going to come back and look at it? When I came back for that... Um, the money that was originally set aside for that in the police boat, we got the money to rebuild the, the uh, fuel dock. I said we would come back for the police boat. We would go through our budget process to see if we had the money. Never promised I'd come back. But right now, the fine grant, that's been dead for about a year or so. So that expired. That expired. The grant. And how much was that for, Carl? $90,000. So the $90,000 and ours was one hundred and thirty. No. Okay, so Yours the fine was 90 and fine was 90. Okay, it was 90 and 90. What, what was 130? I thought our kayak launch, no, 90 each. The, what you're thinking about, the 150 was 60,000 from the police boat, 90,000 for the kayak launch. We took that after Matthew to rebuild our fuel dock. Came back and said, the police boat we really need, so if you would be so kind to give us a 60000 for that, we would go through our budget process, see if we can find the money for the 90000 since that wasn't an emergency-type vehicle or anything. That was a nice-to-have thing. We couldn't find it because we were still re rebuilding from Matthew, then Irma hit. So... So we, I mean, so our, we actually paid in full for the police boat, right? Like 160 you paid something. For, right, you did that, and we, and we matched the other 60. Okay, so at or this fine, point, fine did, I should say. so at this point, the city commission has not yet voted not to do a kayak ramp. They, they just, have during the budget process about Well, they voted, ago. right. Well, they voted that you could have the money for something else, but they have not actually taken a vote to cancel the project. Is that correct? They have. During the budget process, when we asked for the $90,000 that we can't afford it, we let them know that... Um, that was the last year of the find uh, grant. So they canceled the project all the way back then? They canceled the pro project back then. All the way back then, and the money was sitting there waiting here, and you didn't tell anybody, and the public's really mad. And So in other words, we wasted the money, we used it on something else, and we're not, you're not coming back for any grants for that kayak launch, is that correct? We're not coming back at this time for the grant for the, that kayak launch, okay. correct. And in your opinion, the city commission has issued a vote to cancel that project in budget. that budgetary meeting. That was a cancellation as far as you're concerned. Yes. Okay. That's it. Hey, Jim. I got yes. a question. Um, had the city said no to the lost because of budgetary prices, if the port and waterway were to take something like that on, would you take it over afterwards? For that kayak launch? Mm -hmm. uh, sure, we would. Um, we, we would, yes. That's a, that's a short answer. Um, but right now that area is where the kayak launch is going to be is a laydown area for lift station project where we have 13 lift stations that were damaged because of Matthew. It's a $13 million project. We don't expect to get that property back to under our control. They're using it right now, probably for two or three years. Oh, that's, that's awful. That's my guess. That, I mean, honestly, I cannot wait to tell my constituents, they ask me, that your excuse is that the lift station projects, are you telling me nobody can get to the dock? There's no dock there no right dock now. There. Well, what, did you, what did you plan on them launching with? Is there, is there not something already built that's something down there at there's, the end of Liberia? There's literally no. nothing right there right now. That project consisted of a road going in, being built, a trail going out to the water, and about a 300-foot dock being built with a kayak launch at the end of it. So they haven't done a single thing towards building the kayak ramp yet? No. The nothing was, was ever finished? Nothing was started? No, no, not, not what dirt was canceled, nothing. Okay. So the whole project was canceled. Okay. That's all. That's my only question. Any other questions? Thank you. Right, thank you. Where's your vest? Where's my what? <laughs> your bulletproof vest. You're out of uniform. Do I need it? I don't know. <laughs> Sergeant Josh Underwood, the Sheriff's Office Marine Unit. I just have two reminders. And then one topic, uh, the reminder is, reminder it's race week this week um, until the 24th for the sailboat races. And then also the 30th of this month to the 2nd of May, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're scheduled to have the National Pro Watercross Race Oceanside off of Volano. Three-day weekend. And then the last thing I have is just a reminder that I sent to Elise the 
Danger Rock sign is still down in Salt Run. So at high tide, that rock pile you cannot see. It's, it's not exposed whatsoever. It's only exposed at low tide. What, which rock pile are you talking about outside of the Volano boat ramp area? No, the rock pile at in Salt Run past the boat ramp. There used to be a big sign on there that said Danger Rocks. Okay. The sign's gone. Okay. So Carl can probably speak to that. It's close to his house. You need a new sign. What's that? You need a new sign. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I don't know what happened to the last sign. It was there and now it's not. And it was one of the the big signs that was in the middle of that rock pile. It's probably over at the college somewhere. <laughs> is, uh, is the pole still there or everything? No, the pole's gone. And we haven't had any reports of anybody having damaged boats from it that wanted to report it. That's pretty. But that's a, that's a big rock pile. Right there by Cortez. Right? Correct. How do we go about, I mean, do we need to approve some of the funds for that today? Or who would get that replaced? Or Who would replace, actually physically replace it? I guess that would be like whoever you guys decide to do the pilings. Hmm. Because it was on one of the piling. Is that something could be walked? Do does it look like something they could walk out on that and get it in? Or does it need to be done from the water, do you think? You would have to be done from the water. From the water. So they're putting the thing down like a pile and with a sign on it. Correct. I got you. It's almost, Carl, what would you say, in the, almost in the middle or the close to the edge of the channel? Um, I can tell you all about it. Okay. Yeah, he, he'll okay. speak more to it when he comes up. But that's all I have unless you guys got anything for me. Sir. Thank you. Well, Commissioners, I just have a handout for you, and I'll do that first. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Carl, when you start talking, could you take your mask off? Oh, yeah. I guess I can understand better. Hello, Commissioners. I'm Carl Blow with the Florida Inland Navigation District. Um, I guess the, before I forget, as far as the, the issue about the, um, the piling with the sign that marks the, the rock, the, uh, the rock actually was part of that um, groin system that the Corps put in at the turn of the century. There's, there's several of them in Salt Run. That's probably the most southerly one. Uh, and it, it uh, basically is one kind of rock that and what it was is the, the groin actually went west and if you were to dive down there you can find evidence of the rest of the groin but it's it's deep but this one piece is is like at the east end of the original groin and um, it's pretty interesting because it's uh, it's granite I think and uh, it's probably about I would guess maybe eight to ten feet in diameter, and uh, <clears throat> it's uh, got pretty deep water all around it. And uh, but I would say along about mid tide, when the tide's coming in, it starts getting submerged. And actually, it's an entertainment value for me because it's always amazing to me how many people go right by there, even with the sign up, and and almost hit it. Um, but at any rate, what happened? Uh, is about um, oh maybe three or four weeks ago uh, if y'all remember we had a significant northeaster and right before that northeaster we we uh, uh, a uh, local towing company towed in a dead sport fisherman that's about 45 feet long it's actually a manufacturer's ocean yacht and um, they towed it in and they anchored it south of the ramp and uh, one anchor um, and um, and we had a significant west wind blowing ahead of the front that was coming so um, what happened is which is not unusual on salt run is the 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 bottom quality there is not great you know you need to really have two anchors out so they just put one anchor. I guess the, the the towing company came in dead boat right they anchor it up leave um, 
we had significant west winds and what happened is the boat drug anchor and it drug over by the rock and next to the rock is this piling that had a warning sign on it and and I distinctly remember I was sitting down there with my wife we we're eating lunch and we watched the boat basically swing on anchor and swing and hit you know the the piling lay up against it and eventually just pushed it down so uh, I haven't seen what you know I, usually what happens is when you push the piling down like that it floats um, I don't know where it went I haven't seen it in the immediate area but anyway what happened was um, I got a neighbor down the street on Loop Boulevard who is getting really fed up with the the boats that are anchored there around them the, the uh, where's that at Mr. Carl huh? where did you say that was at uh, well, the, the actual rock location. No, where the people are getting really fed up. Well, generally, there's uh, we have some folks in the neighborhood that are uh, getting fed up with the basically the boats that are anchored. There's about is, a dozen. Is that one you're talking about? Yeah, okay. anchored off of the off the uh, the ramp. And um, but anyway, um, this this neighbor um, uh, was really concerned that this this boat was gonna you know. Well, he called me about it, and I said, yeah, it, it probably, you know, we got a northeaster coming. It could be bad because uh, it would be basically loose, blowing around, hitting docks and other boats. So anyway, he contacted the city, and uh, the city got in gear. I don't know how they did it, but um, the, the, the same towing company that towed it in came back and literally picked that boat up within probably less than 12 hours of that big northeaster coming in and they towed it up to North River and uh, if you if you're going over the Volano Bridge and you look out to the north you can see it right now it's probably um, I don't know not more than two miles north on the west side of the just, is it a dead boat yeah no. it's dead I okay mean, and, so they've just and, uh, it actually it's a nice looking you know uh, ocean yacht probably built in the mid 80s early 80s but it's you know I guess the engines are shot but anyway it's up in the marsh now and FWC has stickered it they're, they're working it as a derelict yeah they're working it as, a, the as a derelict so that's the story on how you lost this the, the sign at the big rock in salt run oh, is that okay. boat drug up against they took it took the sign out and and took the sign out okay there was nobody on board at the time uh, so they may not even know that it, it happened um, because you know once it took the sign out it you know tide changed whatever and it went the other way and then when the towing company came in they picked it up and towed it out and uh, re-anchored it up there in North River <coughs> so as far as the cost I don't know you might check with the uh, uh, FWC if they're pursuing the owner under the derelict boat um, legislation you know for some financial responsibility personally I mean you know I'm just telling you what I saw I mean what's that hearsay or I mean well I guess it's not hearsay but anyway I don't know if you want to bother trying to pursue the guy but uh, but that's how that sign got lost it's uh, and, I, and I want to thank I haven't had the opportunity to thank the city uh, because uh, once they were alerted to the uh, potential threat uh, they use their their magic I guess with the towing company and and the guy came back in there and got that boat because if he hadn't and that Northeaster if it had still been there when that Northeaster came through it would have been hitting all kinds of stuff and so oh, we'd be done we'd be pulling it up off the bottom well yeah right. it's gonna be derelict anyway but it would have done a lot more where it is now is pretty safe so it's, it's up, in the marsh I it's in the marsh on the west side uh, and and Generally, you know, the, the northeaster blew it up there, so yeah, even at high tide, it's, it's not not going anywhere. So, hey, Carl, that, I, I, are you sure that the piling's gone? It's not. Why? It you don't be, know. You I haven't seen it floating around. Oh, no, I mean, it, it, could it, it just not be under the water. Down down I have seen no it. evidence of it at all. No, no, and okay. so my guess is, you know how it is when you when they get pushed down far enough, they, the, the yeah. part in the, in the bottom pops up pops and they up, start floating. Yeah. Well, what about the, the sign itself? So that was attached to the pile. Yeah, the boat yeah. It, away. What it did is it just, he drug and leaned up against the piling and, and, and basically pushed it down. It wasn't a violent thing. Yeah. It just, 
went over and that was it. Well, I, I do know that Yelton Construction is in there right now. Yes, re he is. Redoing a, um, uh, De Lorenzo's dock. Right. Might be worthwhile. I'm willing to give them a call and see what they can, if they're willing to do it and how much. Yeah. Because they're right there. Well, and, and um, you know, Yelton's got, um, of all the dock builders that I see in the area, they have the best equipment as far as being able to, you know, adequately get those piling jetted and, and driven into the bottom. So, yeah. He's I mean, even if we got the pile driven and then, you know, we get the sign, sign there, there yeah. having him there. If he's there right now and we can reach him and, and they're willing, is there some way we could today perhaps go ahead and approve Again, because we're going to be a month before we're here again, and he's there now. Could we approve the work up to a certain amount well, so he, that if he says yes, we can move forward? Or? I, I, your attorney can answer that. Normally, I'm in, in my little area, that we give us uh, the, the chair has a certain latitude uh, dollar-wise that, that he can do. Well, I mean, we don't I, have that in I our charter. Mind. Give me five minutes. I'll, I'll go out and call him. That's, if, we, if we could approve it today, it would... Yeah, it would I, I'm, I'm in favor of that. Why don't, why don't we... Um, Sounds like a real emergency. Why don't we pause for a couple minutes and see okay. if we can, uh, we can nail that down. Is there, is there any sense in trying to anchor a sign directly to the piece of granite versus putting it on a piling? I mean, I guess it's not a high traffic enough area that you'd want to spend that kind of money, but it seems like that might be a slightly stronger solution. Uh, well, uh, the, the actually the and uh, putting a sign on the end of that is, is the that actual granite was installed by the Army Corps of Engineers in the you know turn of this or actually the eighteen hundreds and what you might run into is the archaeological issue. Sure. Um, because the lighthouse guys went ahead and they they found and identified and documented those. I think there's three or four of those groins running. You know, north. Mm -hmm. they, the groins actually run east and west, but there's there's probably four of them mm -hmm. installed. Right? And so that wouldn't be a bad idea, except right. they might take issue with that. Right. Place that pile, even at the sign not ready, or because you got it right there. Is that something you guys can maybe do in the next? Okay. Can you give me a, a, some kind of a number on what it would take for you to drive that pile? And then um, when we get the sign, uh, well, I think we could probably get the sign done by the Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. Not. Yeah, okay, so. All right, well, I'm going to put it in the 15 to bring it through. Just bring this uh, we'll off. Okay. All right, thanks, sir. All right. 1,500, And that's just everything but the sign? Yeah, I didn't want him to get involved in the sign if it's not ready, and then he's got to come back. I mean, if, I think if we get the pile in, that's 90% of it. And if the sheriff's office can get the sign, uh, maybe we could just put, attach that using the sheriff's office boat when the sign comes in. Well, I think what we should do is order the sign and just see how it plays out with her. If he can do it all at once, he will. Great. I'll make a motion to approve that for anything under 2000 Does that sound right? Fifteen and two thousand. Yeah, so, so up to two thousand dollars to replace that filing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Um, uh, what what this handout has to do with is uh, I thought it was a good time maybe to come by and, and brief you on where you where we stand on uh, find uh, waterway assistant project grants, um, and what you're looking at is just a breakdown by county. And um, the, the, actually, the first column there, I highlighted St. John's County because, you know, there's 12 counties in the fine district. <clears throat> and, um, and so I highlighted St. John's County. And with the first column there, you'll see the $699,000. And what that is is <clears throat> we, you know, collect a certain amount of money based on our millage from each county. And there's a formula that we have that takes a portion of that money and allocates it for potential uh, waterway assistant project grants. Okay. Road right, what kind of assistance? Uh, well, the, our, our local grant programs. Waterway. Waterway, waterway. Okay. Yeah, it's waterway assistant pro is the official name. It's waterway assistant project grants. 
So anyway, when you, you look at the gross amount of tax collected in St. John's County and you put the formula on it, it, it appears that we're going to have available a maximum of $699,000 for St. John's County in this next grant uh, cycle, which we are currently in. Um, now, that doesn't mean you're going to get all of it because the grants are competitive. They're, they, you know, we have in our June meeting, which will be our first live meeting, I think, in over a year, we, we have all the grant presentations. Uh, you know, like Sydney will come down and do a presentation for the county grants, and uh, then, then the 12 commissioners score. And then based on how they score, determines how they're funded. And if you look at that first column, um, there's a, uh, uh, well, it's a, uh, if you go over one more column, is the, uh, what you're looking at is the amount of dollars in uh, or grant funds requested by county. And so in that second column, if you look at St. John's County, the total amount of grants requested uh, from entities in St. John's County this cycle is $900,000, okay? So uh, what happens is, um, you know, those, your, your county grants and, you know, all the grants from St. John's County are, are, are scored along with all the other grants from all the other counties, and, and they're ranked. And so um, the, um, the next column over, the under over column, is uh, you'll see a, basically what appears to be a negative number of $201,000. What that's telling me or telling us is that, you know, we got a maximum available of $699,000. We've got $900,000 worth of grants. So if all our grants score above the budget line for the program, I got to figure out a way to cut some money out, You're out 201,000. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I'll, I'll, I'll have to negotiate with the county and the city to, to uh, get us within budget. Has the Port Authority ever asked you, because uh, I didn't know this year that we could even ask, for example, the Port could go to find and ask for a grant, but there's a cutoff date for that. Yes. Have we? Have you ever given the Port any grants to do anything like kayak launches or anything? I mean, other than this last one? Has the Port uh, ever come to you for a grant? Man, oh, I'm trying to remember. Let me see. Cause it looks um, like here, like South Florida sure is getting all the money. <laughs> well, what it is, South Florida generates all the money. Yeah, I understand. You know? And and that that's you know. Is it kind of done based on the amount of tax that they bring right, in? Right. Right. And and it, bottom line, Miami Dade has a lot more taxable value of, of real estate than St. Johns County does. So the big counties obviously will have the bigger numbers, which that that's equitable sure. because you know um, that's just the way it works. Um, this is all county projects from St. John's County. Well, what, what we have, that $900,000, the way that breaks down is um, the uh, St. John's County came in with uh, three grant applications, and the city came in with one grant application. Uh, St. John's County has a grant application in for a new boat ramp in, uh, at, uh, in Palm Valley on the <coughs> west side oh, under the bridge. Oh, that was approved? West side of Palm Valley Bridge? They, okay. they actually uh, had submitted that last year, and it wasn't funded because they didn't have all their permits in place at our uh, cutoff, which is in September, uh, where, you, where you have to have all your permits in order to, right. to be funded. Is that a, just a boat ramp there or a marina? No, it's a boat ramp. It's ramp, it's, that's it, great. You know, boat ramp and, yeah. and uh, parking improvements and so forth. And uh, so that, that's a $450,000 grant, and, um, the, um, um, and it's a 50% match, and the county's matching that with you know, county funds. Uh, the other one is um, also up there, but it's on the east side. There's an existing little ramp on the east side under the bridge, and they've got a grant in for $150,000, primarily to improve the parking up there. Uh, and, and here again, that's a 50% match, and, and county funds are, are being used for their match. And then they, the, uh, the third one is Doug Crane, um, and it's $150,000 in Sydney, if I say something. No, you're good. Um, if Doug Crane is, is a $150,000 grant request, and that's for new floating docks primarily. 
and uh, and then of course it's a 50% match uh, with county funds. Um, and I think, and I'll let Sydney. I think they may actually be doing some more work in there outside the grant, uh, but I'll let, let you talk about that. And then the the other grant, of course, is the one that you guys are involved in uh, with the city for salt run dredging, and that's a, a hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar request to find. And, and it's unique somewhat because it's instead of a 50-50 match, it's a 75%, 25% match. In other words, you guys have uh, agreed to put up uh, $50,000 and, and the total, uh, you know, with your 50, you can conceivably get uh, um, 150 from, from fine. So, and the reason for that is it's, it's uh, that that's channel dredging that, that uh, serves multiple entities, and um, the San Sebastian River would fall into that category. So, um, but anyway, um, as you can see, the last thing on that assistant required uh, column, if you look down at the bottom, there's it totals up. <coughs> excuse me for all 12 counties of 21 million 812 thousand and 84 dollars. Okay. We're, we're not, we don't, we're, we can't allocate that much money to this program. So what happens is um, we are not, when we're in our budget hearings in uh, September, in August, September, uh, we figure out how much we can budget for this program. It's been typically running around 12 to $13 million. So that's when that scoring situation comes in as, as the, the higher you know you, you take that 21 million and some change figure out okay we got 13 million say that we can allocate to this program and you just go down from the top of the list down until you run out of the 13 million you draw the line everything above the line gets funded everything below the line doesn't uh, now what's a little bizarre is is um, We'll have projects between our first public or our first tax hearing and our last tax hearing that may have scored above the line, but they they, they pull them, they, they they withdraw them or something. Which sometimes you, you might start out below the line and you might be able to go above the line. But anyway, that's how our our system works. If that makes any sense, hopefully. So that's that's. I don't have any questions. That's all right, all. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Arps. Um, since we're later in the agenda, I'll just touch um, on Doug Crane um, with our grant application with Find um, Sydney Limblad, uh, Natural Resources Program Manager, St. John's County Parks and Rec. So um, the port actually is helping with our match for the Doug Crane um, Find grant. You guys um, allocated seventy-five thousand dollars which was just for, originally for two floating docks and two aluminum gangways. Um, we took that money, matched it with another 75,000 from St. John's County to then go apply for a fine grant to expand that project further um, due to permitting and to make sure that we have those permits in hand in September. One additional floating dock and gangway is a part of that permit process. So if we ever did the second floating dock, we would do that in a phase two approach for that um, project. Um, I'm sorry, if you did the second floating dock? Because the permitting process already started with just one floating okay, dock. Okay, so we don't know yet if they're going to let you do a second one. We're just not adding that because it will delay the permitting process. If we don't have the permits in hand in September, we won't get that grant. Okay. okay. So since it's already within our application, we're just going to move forward with that. Additionally, in that project, um, we're expanding the parking um, as well as striping the parking lot to make de uh, parking bumpers, um, ADA accessibility, a Moby map for kayak launch on the soft landing, um, and then the floating dock and gangway. Oh, did you say something about a kayak launch by the floating dock? Yep, we're, so we're going to add a Moby mat, so it's oh, yeah. accessible okay. for people to launch non-motorized vessels right. there. So has any work been done yet at Doug Crane, or nothing's actually started? Nothing. We haven't broken ground on that right now. Okay. No. And when can we tell folks to expect um, some floating docks over there? So the if we're awarded the grant through FIND, um, we would be notified around July, August preliminary. Oh um, we would then have to make sure that we have our permits in hand by September 15th. 
and then we would be awarded October 1st, so next So it won't year. happen this year for the season. Well, and you know, the sad thing about that is we were told it would be, yes, it was last summer, we, they were waiting, now it's this summer, it's not gonna happen. And that's just, that's just wrong. We don't know why. I mean, people, it's just like we can get the vote to get in the water, but we can never make it happen. It just keeps getting pushed off and kicked under. And not it's just like this kayak point. thing over in Lincolnville. You can make an excuse, but we were flush with FEMA money at the same time. Yes. We were not. I'm just so sorry. The, I'm just I know. Saying. The permitting process is extremely delayed due to COVID with people not. COVID waiting. delayed. All, okay. The, the permitting process is extremely long right now. So if people so fuss at me about it, I can say, look, we they just got stuck like anybody else with the COVID slowdown. Okay, thank you. I speak on that permitting process for you all too. Nathan Otter, St. John's County uh, Natural Resources Superintendent. So we're in the final stages of our Army Corps permit for the floating docks there. Okay. Uh, what they did was uh, they sent out the public hearing to the neighborhood there. So that's usually right before they're about to actually give us our, our permit for that. So that's been sent out to that neighborhood. Um, they do whatever it is as far as the public comes back, notice to them, and then they would issue that permit to us. But as Sydney said, yeah, this past year, permitting, everything like that is at least doubled, which it's already a long process, oh, as you're probably okay. aware. Um, so maybe by Army the Corps winter? can be six to eight months um, just on a normal year um, for props for um, its permits, but we're, we're well over a year and a half right now. So they might perhaps, um, if y'all are looking at fall for getting everything, perhaps they might start building something by this winter? Yes, Next season, so they'll be in, in As long as permits in hand, yeah, yes, ma'am. We're, we're right on track to start. Uh, Thank like, you so like much. Like Carl said, we applied for, um, for all of our um, okay. grants and everything like that. Thank so you. Money and everything would be waiting as long as permits go through. Um, we've also had three public hearings um, for that whole neighborhood. So that's kind of went into our decision making on having the two floating docks, a single floating dock, things okay. like that. Um, the neighborhood really enjoys using the soft landing side, and that's right. where the kayak, um, informal kayak launch kind of came into opinion there too. Um, instead of having the two floating docks that extend pretty far out, that channel, um, as you guys may or may not know, is pretty narrow already. Yes, uh, very so narrow. Two floating docks with, you know, boats stacked up on those really can be a burden on some of those. So um, scaling it back to the single floating dock with the soft landing and the kayak is the phase one approach. And as we see more and more traffic coming in, we would look at you know I phase see. two of adding that that second back end. But the community itself would really like the single at this time. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I think that's all we have for the updates now, and then we're up again in old business. All right. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. No other government representatives present, so let's move on to Secretary Treasurer's report. Okay, for the city police law enforcement overtime of the 8,000 committed, we've spent $150. Of the St. John's County Sheriff's Department overtime of the 25,000 committed, we've spent 74.11. Of the derelict boats uh, amount of 25,000, we spent 6,885. But that was I forgot where that was from last month. We decided to designate that repair to derelict boats. I can't remember the repair. The floating dock. The floating dock, yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, navigational repairs, was that navigational repairs? There's 10,000? Oh, the night vision, that was the 19, 7,010 that we spent. The fire boat, we spent the 28,741, and the diamondback boat, we, sp <coughs> we spent 34,340. Uh, in the Florida State Board of Administration Fund A, we have $23,153. In the operating account, we have $291,722. And in the money market account, we have $2,485,306. We have um, budgeted for taxes for the Fiscal year, this fiscal year, 583,400. We've received 562,716. So the balance that we're expected to receive is 20,684. Though why we haven't received that yet, I'm, unless people aren't paying their tax bills. So that's it. Any questions? Please. Uh the money that we just uh, allocated for the piling, 
what fund would that come out of? Navigational? Uh, navigational repairs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds good, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, okay, thank you. Other questions? Great. Um, approval of minutes. Any changes or uh, other modifications to... Approval of minutes. Sorry, what's that? Say it again. I move approval of the minutes. Okay. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, engineering report. We have no open task orders. Right. Good. Uh, moving on to old business, additional funding, Bellana Dredge, welcome back. Sydney Lim Lab, Natural Resources, Program Manager, Parks and Recreation. Would I'm you move that mic down just a little bit? I am so old okay. here, thank you. <laughs> so I believe Elise sent you all a document. Um, there's a lot of moving parts to this project, so I just wanted you to have it in front of you and absorb it before um, today, so it's not the first time you saw it. Um, so a background again, the Volano Dredge project um, at low tide, the shoaling that has occurred makes the channel very unnavigable, um, creating boater safety concerns at the Volano Landing boat ramp at low tide. Um, the Board of County Commissioners approved staff to apply for the 2021 fine grant application um, for the Volano Dredge for a project cost of 240000 with a 50-50 match. So we applied for this last, last grant cycle. We were awarded it. Our 50-50 match was $60,000 from Port with a matching of $60,000 from St. John's County and then the 50 match of one twenty dollars from Find. Um, when Find awarded the grant, um, they increased their funding to one eighty dollars since it was a 50-50 match, then St. John's County up their portion to one twenty, dollars with Port still at the $60,000 that you approved. This original project cost at three sixty. dollars included just transporting the dredge material to Tillman Ridge landfill, um, which is local. Um, during the permitting process, the level of arsenic found in the channel now requires the material to one, either dry out on site before transporting it to the landfill, or to transport the material to a mitigation site in Jacksonville. Um, staff's been given the direction through our administration to not take up public parking spaces in Volano Landing during boating season. Um, one, to not take away public access to the ramp, um, as well as the drying process can occur for an unknown amount of time. This happened at Butler Boat Ramp West. Um, it was closed for two to three years because it would just keep raining and the sand could not dry out. So to avoid a ramp being closed for an unknown amount of time, the project was rebid with transporting this material to the mitigation site. And now the project cost is five hundred seventy-seven thousand eight hundred forty. Oh Lord, have mercy! <laughs> wow. And that let's just go right back to the exact reason that went up because of the transportation, not the amount of material or anything. But they have to take it further. They don't cannot take it locally. And why can't they take it locally? It has to go to a mitigation site in Jacksonville because of the arsenic levels. The local um, landfill site will not accept it. And we just found that out. When the permitting process started, and wow. found. So that's some really bad sand. Who is doing that dredging? Do you know offhand? So it, we haven't gone under contract with anyone because it just went back out to bid. Okay, so. So St. John's County is looking for additional partnership opportunities if the port would be willing to do so. Our new, our, our difference now is 217848 at our project cost. Well, I was going to ask while you had him there, could you come on up Hospital Creek and around that local channel? But gee whiz. <laughs> so we're up to 500 and how much now? 577,847. And I do want to say, say um, our uh, future plan for we're trying to set up a dredge maintenance program. Um, so similar to what the city of St. Augustine does and going to find every three years to get a dredge uh, grant, we're trying to set that up to do that as well. So that's part of our budget request this year with St. John's County as well. Are Find or the county putting any more money in? So St. John's County will have to cover that full cost since mm -hmm. the project was already awarded from Find. Their their maximum level is at 180. That's locked They down. can't go, it's too late to go back yeah. to that. So St. John's County's having, so how much do you need from us? 200. <laughs> <laughs> she won't say it. <laughs> Gold stars, so I get 200 to <laughs> It's a lot different than 60, isn't it? Oh, that's just awful. I know. <laughs> when were they going to come? When are they coming? When was the target to shoot for dredging? 
So as soon as possible, what we will have to go is back or do is go back in front of the board one to accept the award from Find, as well as present the new project cost of five hundred and seventy-seven thousand, um, and then to uh, lost my train of thought. Once once the board approves that, and then whatever additional funding that they would have to uh, they would have to vote on that, um, and then. Has the county looked at it yet? Has the county voted on the additional funds yet, or you have it? We haven't. No. So I wanted to see if there is any additional funding that we could put toward the project. Yeah. After they do approve it, um, then we would move forward with our purchasing department, finalize a contractor, um, and then start the dredge. This project will not close down the ramp. They can work around the boaters. Mm -hmm. um, so as soon as possible, you know, we don't have to wait till the fall or the winter. We have fifty thousand dollars as a budget line item in our in our budget for dredging. I don't know that I'd feel comfortable committing the entirety of that to this, but I, th I think it would be reasonable for us to, to up our share a little bit here, you know? But, but, Cindy, but you said you're gonna... That dredging is, is we've already, I think, earmarked that for, uh, salt, is it Salt Run or San Sebastian? I don't remember, but the, that's, that's already... That's already committed? That's already committed. Okay. Cindy, you, you're, you're telling us that you're gonna go back to the county and see if you can get something out of that 217 or well, they've already have, said no no we have to go back to the board one tell them that we were granted the the um awarded the grant from find <clears throat> the new project cost and then the additional funding that would need to be added to the project they want us to make their job easier by bringing the number down a little bit yeah. but they have to ask for extra well um, we also, i mean part of that agenda item is also to recognize the sixty thousand from port so to just to make it one agenda item from our board is also um, well, is there any way, I mean, I don't mean, we haven't discussed this yet, I'm just throwing this out, the board has not even discussed it, I was intending to discuss it with the board, but since we're here now, any way to get an estimate, anyways, while they're here, and taking all that mud off, because I think Hospital Creek Coral would be in the same position of having to be carted off, anything they touch in Hospital Creek would have to be stored ashore, the same situation, right? Is there some way that we can even get an estimate that if you're going to come and dredge, could you do the Hospital Creek? There's about four bumps. So again, it, um, it would go back to your guys' permits and everything like that to have to be able to do oh. that. So, uh, you know, they couldn't just add tack on to what we're, we're doing. There's a permitting process. Yeah, right. Okay. There's a permitting process for dredging. Um, the material that we have within the Volano Basin, um, when they do the soil samples, it, the arsenic levels came back higher than what expected. we were expecting. Um, we might have, we might not, might not have that in the hospital. You might group. not, you might. Um, it also depends on the reviewing agency, um, you know, as far as the, how they're going to say that threshold is good or not. Um, it, again, like Sydney said, they, uh, they say you can dry it out and then retest it again and then it can be hauled off. But you need a pretty good space to be able to dry that out. And, and again, if it rains, that kind of holds everything back up. It, it, can make it wet. So, in our, in our circumstance here, um, we have to haul this off to a mitigation site that um, that can handle this. When you say drying it out, are you are they putting it in those bladders that the water's got to bleed out of? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. They, are, are you familiar with Butler West, the um, the program that they had there? It was like a almost like a treat water treatment plant. It kind of looked like well, three steps. I remember. To it. I think Carl will too. When the conch house did that dredging, and they had those bladders in the parking lot. And all that silt just clogged everything up. I mean, you could push on it, and oh. it was like ready to bust. Yeah, and we I think learned they ended the hard up having way to cut that, that open, and it was a real mess. Well, that's, that's the way they work. Um, they're called geotubes, and uh, they constantly well, other <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, wasn't there a problem that they couldn't? It, it wouldn't. The water wouldn't bleed out. The silt was in there, so yeah. packed up, and the water wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. He couldn't dry it out. Yeah, again, we learned the hard way. Um, you know, we were expecting maybe six months at the same time with Butler, and it ended up being close to two years that that, hairy, that area there was blocked off because of that. Yeah. And then uh, once it was hauled away, we had all of that residue. <coughs> we had to regrade the whole parking lot with new material. So it turned into a, a bigger Real mess than what yeah. we could have imagined before. So, um, again, like Sydney said, you know, we're just here to kind of ask. Uh, we have to go to our board either way. Um, so that's up for you. Do you all need to answer on that today? Uh, yes, ma'am, just because You'd uh, like to answer if, on 
the, the way that we'd like to do it would go to our board next month um, okay. and start this, the project as soon as possible. You know, I understand. It is important. That's, yeah, when you don't yeah. have many boat landings, you have to keep them open. Yes, ma'am. Is the light going up out on the end of those rocks yet? Is it getting close to the light installation? That might not have been your project. Was that FWC, do you recall? <clears throat> Uh, that was uh, that was a topic we brought up in the board to look at. Okay, the light, you know, the the groins at the end of that same boat landing. I thought it was Lieutenant Zerkowski brought that up, and I thought we approved a light. Am I just dreaming? To go at the end of that, um, y'all don't know the project. Okay, never mind. I'm pretty sure it was Lieutenant Zerkowski that brought that up. Maybe I can make one more point that might be a little bit more palatable than 217. <laughs> <laughs> um, last time when we did bring this um, to you guys, I believe the discussion was um, Port would match 90 if St. John's County matched 90. Um, at that time, we didn't believe we needed that amount. We thought the project cost was going to be at 240. So maybe that number. So you mean 90 plus the difference? You got 90 from the no, county? No, just, just, just from your 60, <coughs> going from 60 to 90. So it'd be Yeah, we had originally 30. agreed to 90. Then they dropped it back down to 60. What she's saying right. is we should just go ahead and go back up to 90. <laughs> and then say we, we already agreed the rest. to it previously anyway. Well, yeah. 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 more than that. For okay. <laughs> but you need more than 90 total is what you're saying. You need a total of 200. For, the whole, for yes. We would so what do you have to, to get up right to $577,000? Just vote you back up to 90 right now and or you want to uh, Well, I was just more. offering that as a more palatable <laughs> conversation. Well, I, I think I agree with what uh, Matt had, had said that you know, these are the kind of projects that I'm not opposed to dipping into some of that $2.5 million to get it. To is get that the 50, done. Matt, you were talking here? At the I'm not speaking for you, Matt, but I mean, I, this is one no. of the projects I think that we both agree that this is. Yeah, and we've already committed committed funds to this. I, I don't I don't see the problem with committing a little bit more. I mean, obviously, we're not going to cover even half of the, the extra, but we can we can certainly pitch in a little more, I, I would say. So we've got the, on the on the uh, money sheet here, we've got 50,000 committed and dredge, and that's this project? No. no. no, no. That has nothing to do with this. So we're just no. looking to find this from somewhere up here, right? No, like unspecified from the, from the uh, money market account. Well, what about unspecified marine? Yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what it'll come from. Yeah. yeah. 280,000 in there, 300. Yep. yep. So I'll, I'll move then that we uh, approve that additional $30,000 to get back to, to 90 to commit to this. I'll I think that's that. a, a reasonable number. I'll second that. That's not, very, that's not getting you there, though, isn't it? Well, they're, we don't, they don't expect us to pay for the whole thing. They just no, want but she's asking if she is asking for more than 90. Is that correct? Whatever you all would like yeah, to contribute. Yeah, she, 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 she gets all smiling. Yeah. Just, just please understand, I mean, the what county I'm recognizes so that we do need to put a share into this. So this is up for yeah. you all's discussion. We're here today just to ask. Uh, we will obviously have to go back to our board either way, um, you know, with, with that remaining cost. So I'd be, just as part of discussion, I'd be glad to go up to the 90. Not glad, but, you know, if we don't have much choice here, be glad to do the 90. But... Um, uh, maybe even when uh, Commissioner West, if we want to revisit again, you know, later, I'd be glad to vote for the 90 today, though. Yeah, I don't have, I, you know, you could, if we commit to the 90, you go see what you can do, mm -hmm. and then okay. we still come have back that. to us and see what, yeah. you know, what we're missing. I know there's going to be a lot of back and forth, but. <laughs> That's a lot of money, though, to take some the mud over the road. The 90 right now. Mr. Chairman, I'll I'll restate up. the motion. Uh, I'll restate the motion that we uh, approve an additional $30,000 for this Volano dredging project to bring our commitment to $90,000 total. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We greatly appreciate Passes. it. Thank you. Uh, next up is kayak launch list of concerns, all commissioners. Um, without Commissioner West here, this one actually might not be ripe for us to discuss either, although I'm, I'm open to... Uh, <coughs> The contrary uh, opinion on that. I think she's hearing a lot from constituents. If I would be willing to uh, wait to the the next uh, meeting, if you want to wait for her to get back here. Sure. So let's table this one until next meeting. Any any opposition to that? Okay. I'll make a motion. Got it. Um, I don't even think we need to make a motion. Uh, next up is digitizing records, which uh, that's going to be Elise. Elise. Yes. Digitizing records, old business. Well, that was. Um, <laughs> um, no, I've been giving you all the sheets and explaining to you guys, like, and I can tell all of you mm -hmm. and explain 
and explain no, um, that's not it's that's the total. For right. It's not, right. It's not, not an just independent edition. Right. Mm -hmm. And you all have a copy of that. March seventeenth. Yeah. Um, so, so you, you all mm -hmm. Okay, so there's nothing, nothing else, uh, no, no additional I presentation just, there. Okay. I didn't know whether you wanted to continue or wait for change or something. I was, I think I was supposed to be doing some checking on the college, doing the internship yeah, thing. And I'm sorry. And I, I did, and I've just been a crazy month, and I promised to do better and have some information that come up. So, so it sounds like this one is not ripe to discuss this month either, so we should probably table it until next month. And so can you add that to old business for the agenda next month as well, along with kayak launch list of concerns? Unless anybody else has anything else they want to say on that? So kayak launch is going to next month. And digitizing records. And I know it, Taylor. And the agenda as modified has no new business now, which means we are back to public comment. No public comment. Comment by commissioners. Oops, sorry. Mr. Blow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just wanted to take a second and talk about this arsenic issue because mm -hmm. it's, it's something that we've been dealing with for a long time. Uh, first off, I want to make it clear it's naturally occurring arsenic. Mm -hmm. It's um, apparently the shellfish concentrate arsenic into their shells and of course if you dig around anywhere here there's tons of shells in the soil um, when we first ran into it probably when I first became aware of it was um, gosh almost well over 10 years ago uh, at the time <coughs> the, the folks at DEP in Jacksonville um, uh, Dr. Steve Schropp was uh, the representative from Taylor and Dr. Schropp had actually done a lot of research uh, prior, going, prior to um, joining Taylor on this particular issue. And uh, he was an expert. And um, he was able to tell the DEP at that time that, you know, one, it was naturally occurring and that um, it was, there was no hazard to the environment. And, and what we would do uh, when we initially started dredging on um, both the San Sebastian and, and Salt Run was we would take that material wet to various uh, borrow pits west of town and backfill the borrow pits. Um, what's happened is the folks at DP in Jacksonville, there's been, you know, change and um, it's my understanding they've taken the position that, um, that um, there's, I'm, and I don't understand this, that there's some potential for leaching like you would have in a industrial arsenic contamination. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a scientist, but from what little I know, it doesn't make any sense. And I'll, I'll defer to Taylor on it. But um, I know that uh, one thing is that <laughs> it, it, if you test it when it's wet, you'll have a higher value than when you test it when it's dry. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's where you get into this issue of drying it out. And, and the problem is, you know, you got all this material to dry it out. You need a large area to spread it all out and till it and all that kind of stuff. And, that, and that's why you get stuck in the situation of having to take it to a DEP-approved uh, area for, for the material instead of being able to just backfill a borrow pit with it. Right. But... Um, you know, it's, it's very, I, I find it very frustrating. Um, I, I submit that if you went out on the beach and you took a sample of the material on the beach, you would probably find arsenic in it, just like you do in this material <coughs> that, that you dredge. But it's, 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 it's unfortunate, but it has, you know, it's, it's definitely raised the cost. It's doubled the cost of uh, the dredging and in, in, in this area in Salt Runs and Sebastian River or or, or Carolina Ramp, um, and and I, hopefully I won't get out in front of uh, on, on this issue. But on Bolano, uh, I've been talking to the county about uh, uh, basically going for a fine grant in the next cycle to look at uh, uh, installing a uh, some sort of retaining wall or 
that might incorporate a, a living shoreline on the south side of that cut uh, because you've got your jetty on the north side which has sort of stabilized that but we were thinking that if you could stabilize the south side it would reduce the amount of uh, siltation in that basin in there so maybe you know in our next cycle we'll, at the point we'll be at the point of looking at that and that would reduce the dredging frequency in there because mm -hmm. obviously with this art it's getting harder and harder to handle dredge material and find a permanent home for it so um, anyway I just thought I'd pass it on thank Fine. you thank you Carl no other public comment comments by commissioners Tom uh, Chris yeah um, let's get back to the the piling and the sign Jim do you do does the city make their own signs you know those who, who do you get to build your signs, if you don't mind? I meant the signs for Salt Run? Yeah, no, the signs for the for Salt Run. You know, just the... the Quite honestly, that was always part of the replacement that you guys always did. Yeah, I'm just saying... Who I'm not sure to? who they got them from. But the city doesn't have their own sign-making no. thing. Does no. the county? I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> we do have a, a yeah. sign shop that deals with our traffic signs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually a one or two person show and it can take, you know, six months or so for mm -hmm. standard signs. So we, okay. uh, we outsource quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll, we'll usually have to get quotes and stuff um, from multiple different agencies. Do you have any in town that you... There's a couple in town. Um, signs now off of 312 is yeah, one that we... They are really good. And they do Brad, lots of big metal signs. Brad Brown. Yeah. <coughs> Carl, do you have any idea of how big that sign was? If you ask Chip Yellow, or not Chip, Chip Sun, I guess he's taking over, he may have a great source, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I, I know uh, Brad Brown pretty good at that. It should be that kind of stuff they make on it, too, when you light, shine a light at it. Yeah, it really, yeah, yeah it pops at you. Yeah, reflective. Stop sign. Yeah. It said Call danger it. rock. Yes. Or submerged rock. It had a lot I of think it was roughly. Circle the lines through it or something. Yeah, it didn't. It was all uh, danger submerged rock. rock. Right. And what was always entertaining to me is that people would go right. I mean, they would steer for the sign, you know. And and uh, but to answer your question, I think it was probably a four by four or something like that. Maybe three by three, but probably four by four. Okay. Um, concern of getting that sign done. Do you want me to? Isn't that just a secretarial thing? Or secretarial, just call over to the sign place and order it? That's no, not, not something. Normally. I mean, I would do that once you guys decide. You know, I can't right. do anything without you guys deciding. Well, that's what I'm just saying. That just seems like a secretarial <coughs> job, but it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, I don't mind calling Brad and asking what the cost would be for a 4x4 four four, you know, made out of that reflective material and, mm -hmm. and how quickly he could make it. Um, but if we could do it all at once and... He could pile. probably do that before Herb's finish. I bet he could get that done in a week or so. Yes, mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I'll you want to give me a budget to not go over or whatever, and I'll see what he can do. Yeah, yeah, what's a four by four sign going to cost? A couple hundred four bucks, right? Metal. Should we do like three fifty, three four hundred? Like do five hundred just to be on the safe side? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll move that uh, we approve up to five hundred dollars to uh, to make a replacement sign. I'll second right, well, that. I'll, I'll call Brad, and then um, if he can get the sign made, I'll. I'll we we'll go ahead and do the vote, and it's done. Right. Yeah, I've got I'll a second. second here. I'll second all, that. All in favor? All right. all right, good. Okay, and then I'll also get with Herb and see when he could do it. I guess the time to do it is dead low. Right. Can I add something on that? Sure. You just, I think you need to make sure we, we keep it in regulation when you make it. Like the standard boating danger, orange and white, you oh, know, yeah. diamond. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's still got to meet the, the boating standards. Yeah. What is it? It's a diamond, and the sign has to be white and orange. Is I can send you this. Okay. A diamond. Now, what, what do you mean? A diamond, diamond shape. shape. Not the sign diamond shape, but inside the sign. Diamond shape that says danger. Oh, I'll okay. send you yeah, this the, the standard from the sign. voting mm -hmm. yeah. guidelines. But not the dimensions of the sign. Is that also a regulation? It doesn't say anything about the dimensions. Okay, then we'll ignore that part. Yeah. 
<laughs> Dare them to do something about it. Um, no comments here. <laughs> Commissioner Flowers, comments? Yes, both my comments are about Summer Haven. Uh, the first one is, uh, there's a lot of complaints about, you know, the new berm we put up with the new dredging there on the first part, not what they're doing now. That berm is just caving into the river. One of the problems is at high tide, you can go through there with the rolling crested wake, and you know what happens with a loose sand berm, it caves into the river. There's still um, $84,155 in the Summer Haven account. And I believe the Summer Haven friends came a few times ago, a few meetings ago, talking about fencing or something possible we could put along there. Um, could we put that, if you're interested, could we put that on the next meeting's agenda? And I also have some brochures that came from that um, convention I went to that had some, not just fencing, but different things they're doing in that same vein. So, so on, we, the, on the agenda, is this under new business that you're uh, if, we're, if the port is interested, I'd like to add it to next month's agenda, if that's possible, to discuss some possible fencing or mitigation issues with the new berm. And the only other thing I wanted to comment on is a few meetings ago, I asked about, I inquired about why we haven't moved forward with the um, claim against the contractor for Summer Haven. And I asked about John Wallace coming in and give us a legal opinion. And I've given John all of the insurance information and everything, but we cannot seem to get the records. Can you give us an update on that, Mr. Meek? The um, update on that is you and I have exchanged emails. Um, at one point, I was apparently under the mistaken impression that you were making the request for the records as a public records request rather than as your role as commissioner. You clarified by email after that that you were making the request as a commissioner. My understanding from Taylor is that they have turned over as a part of the project itself all records that the port would have had. Therefore, if the port wishes to have additional records or additional copies from Taylor, there would be a charge for that. And if your request is being made as a commissioner, there would need to be a vote to expend commission funds to do that. Um, which All I need to know, and I've been waiting for months, is do I, can I have a complete file of the Taylor Engineering Summer Haven project? I don't believe we have a complete file at the port. If we're being told we have everything, then I can move forward? Well, we have everything in the port office, everything that has to do with Summer Haven, Taylor has given us. Okay. Well, I know we have everything they have given us. That does not mean we have a complete file, and he can't make the decision without, I've got bits and pieces of it. I don't have the whole project. So, A, I'd like to take a vote, if possible, to get all of the records from Summer Haven, because once I send that to him, the decision is made. If I'm missing something, I'm not going to know it. And time is of the essence. We're down to about a year at this point, or less. What is this, April? Time is of the essence. So I'd like to ask the board, if, if a um, charge is incurred, would the board agree to pay that so that we can get our records in full from Summer Haven? Haven? Um, excuse me, from uh, Taylor Engineering. And, and just to be clear for the board's consideration, to my knowledge, Taylor does not currently have a dollar estimate as to what it would cost to do that, but I don't necessarily want to speak completely for Taylor since they are here as well. Um, but just if you're deliberating whether or not to write a check as to what that check might be. And again, Taylor can jump in to the extent they wish. What would that cost? See, I've done several emails and I'm still waiting for a cost for two months. What would it cost me to get a complete package of the Summer Haven project from Taylor Engineering? In all honesty, it, you have I don't know how you would not have a complete record set. Well, have you seen the records that we have in our office? I know that you were given a complete record set. Otherwise, we could have never completed the project. When, did, when were we given a complete record set? Throughout. Over time, through, over time of the Jesus project. Christ. I do not think this is very difficult. I'm just asking. We have an interlock, We have an agreement. And you're telling me the records are there? I'm telling you they are not all there. What do you, records are missing? How do you know just, not this there. is a What's simple missing? request for a copy of the project packet, the complete copy of a project packet. It is so simple, I can't believe it. A lawyer is asking to look at it to make a legal decision, and all I've gotten is either zero response or nothing. 
I've offered to pay for this personally several times. This money belongs to Summerhaven. I intend to finish that project correctly, and I can't do it when the money's bleeding out. So, and I can't move forward to collect any kind of reparations if I can't get a complete project package. But no, sir, I don't, I've looked at the records, and I don't believe we have a complete project package. If it costs more, again, I'll restate. I'll pay for this myself. I just want Taylor Engineering to submit to us the com a complete package in one fail swoop. Just like that. Don't make me go look. I have. It's not all there. So how much would it cost? What for documents do you project? think you're missing? I'm sorry? What documents do you think you're missing? I think I'm missing a lot. I'm not an engineer. So again, that's why I'm, why, why is it so hard to you make a copy of the whole package again? So I know I have everything. I have a piece from Summer Haven. I have a piece from the friends over here. I have a piece from this that I don't know where it came from. Mike Trundat, perhaps. Why is it such a hard thing for you to give me a complete package? Just make me another copy. I will pay you anything you want. What's your definition of a complete package? What everything you, you would, in? everything that you would have on the project. It's real easy. It's just so easy. Like everything you'd have on the Summer Haven project. You can put it digital. You don't have to copy it by pages. I'm going to send it to the Mr. Wallace, and it's all done. But when we have a contract, we pay this many millions that won't give me a full and complete package. If I've asked for it twice, it doesn't matter. A full and complete package, you could have not have completed this project without all of the complete package in your hand because that package has to be public record. So this project was completed with all kinds of things. We paid money without a vote coming out on this board, okay? Again, I'll ask you, will you send me a completed package from your office, and at what price would that be? Is that the direction of the commission? That you believe you don't have a complete package? I, I, I have the, Someday in the future, when you're all out here again, since we've been here 30 years, and somebody says, well, why did you charge the, charge the port again? for another set of documents when you know you, they had a complete set of documents and we're going to have to stand here and go. Well, I'll be glad to pay for it, sir. I don't see how it should be a problem. I will be glad to pay any amount you want just for complete. Um, is it me? I don't have this. I need to get this to the lawyer. I have constituents calling me almost every day, sometimes multiple, about Summer Haven. We've agreed to let the man make a legal opinion. He can't do it without a complete package. You told us that he already had a legal opinion. When we voted on that, uh, no, let sir. me finish. When we voted on that a couple months ago, what you claimed was that he already had a legal opinion and was raring to go. So all this extra work that you're doing, sir, I'm trying, I'm wait trying a minute, you let me, you let me finish you don't too. Let me finish, Sandy. Go ahead, because I'm going to have my say. Go ahead, finish, Matt. What I voted on, and I don't Mr. want to Chairman, the rest of it. Yes, sir. I move we adjourn. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually, uh, we're going to adjourn this meeting. Okay. We'll talk about this next time. Uh, that is ridiculous. Mr. Lawyer, I was not done with my comments from commissioners. And I believe I, this is my comment time. So for no, him to stop me. No, no, no. The, meeting is, my, the meeting is adjourned. Our he stopped me in the middle of my comment time. And I cannot be, help someone we'll even if y'all acting like this. Thank you very much. You're going to get in trouble, Matt. Keep it up. <laughs> Shaking on the knees. Um, is that everyone announced the next meeting? The next meeting will be May the 18th. Oh. <sighs>